Today I've got a guitar from Martin that we don't talk about too often from a series that we do not talk about too often. This is the GPC X2E from Martin's X series and I'm going to try to figure out why this guitar, while not one of the big names that you hear from Martin, is so popular. Stick around. How's it going, y'all? This is Cooper Greenberg here at Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on, like the videos, comment, let us know what you want to see. We want to hear from you guys, and we appreciate you watching. So, like I said, today we got the GPC X2E, um, a guitar that we sell quite a bit of in our store, and I'm assuming all over the place. Um, this has been kind of a sleeper model that is super popular, and I don't think we've ever really dug into it on the channel. So I kind of pulled one up. We just got Martin restock, and uh, in the process of reordering Martins, I always look to see what are the top sellers. Maybe we should increase the quantity of what we got going on. And it's always the HD28s and 0018s, and pretty much every single one that you expect would be a top seller is a top seller. This was kind of a standout for me because it is not a standard series. It's not American-made Martin, and um, it had fantastic, you know, kind of sell-through and customer appreciation. And this seems like it's kind of a underappreciated model. So I pulled one out. I have played one before, but I've never really dug in. I mean, I. Anytime anything comes in, I typically get to play it, but this is the first time really trying to figure out why this one out of all of the X series seemed to be one of the most popular. Um, Martin's kind of series are broken out as, you know, you know the standard series, the 15, 16, 17, 18, 21, 28, 35, 36, 41, 42, 45. All those that you get above the 15 will be the standard series. They're going to be American made. And then you've got the Road series, which is made up of the 10s, the 12s, the 13s. And um, those are also very popular. That's where the cutoff is between American made and Mexican made. So the X series would be even lower priced from the Road series. Um, Road series, it's kind of split between layered back and sides guitars and all solid wood guitars, but there's some very popular guitars in that series as well. You know, the D12, D13, the SC13, that's absolutely blown up. All those are within the Road series. The X series, they've got, you know, the Little Martins, the LX1, um, the GPC X2E, which I've got here. There's, you know, Dreadnoughts and Triple O's and Double O's and, you know, a lot to choose from with the X series, and that would be Martin's total entry level, the lowest price guitar that you're going to get besides something like the Backpacker would be from the X series. Now, this guitar is uh, right off the bat, you'll notice the body shape, and I think this, you know, really contributes as to why it's so popular. This is a Grand Performance body shape, and it looks very eerily similar to another very popular guitar that we talk about a lot. Uh, Taylor's Grand Auditorium. So this will be the most similar shape to, say, Taylor's most famous shape, the Grand Auditorium. And it is available all throughout all these different lines. You know, they do make a GPC-28, um, which would be from the standard series American Made. But this is one of the, you know, X-series entry-level ways to get this body shape. And in the last however long this body shape has really taken hold, maybe the last 20 years or so, um, it's proven to be a huge choice for versatility. Um, it is wider and it's deep and it's curvy, so it's comfortable to play. It's not, you know, your big old dreadnought. But I think one of the appeals is you do get the extra body size um, that you might get out of a dreadnought just in a more comfortable shape. So you got a little more, uh, you know, ease of playing while not losing any of that volume. Uh, the GPCs, like you see in the uh, 13s and 16s, which are all super popular, um, C will be a cutaway. So you do have GP without the cutaway. Uh, anything GPC is going to be this body style with the cutaway. That's what you're looking at here. Um, so I think the body shape and size really contributes to why it's popular. And, um, you know, the X-Series got kind of a myriad of woods going on here. This is 
a solid spruce top. You can get this with a sapele top. There's other options. Um, but something that I think is indicative of the price and worth talking about is this is HPL back and sides, high pressure laminate. And um, as we've mentioned on this channel before, not all laminate is created equal. That we sometimes we talk about layered back and sides instead of saying laminate back and sides. I saw a comment recently, why do we say layered when we're talking about Taylor and we say laminate when we're talking about, say, some of Fender's imports? Um, and that's because not all of it's the same. Taylor and Martin, when they do layered back and sides, you know, certain higher end laminates are layered. It's all wood in there is what we're talking about. This is high pressure laminate, which is uh, not all wood. This is sort of a amalgamation. It is a material that has been put together with things that aren't just wood. Um, there is, and I, I mean, we can dig into it more. Maybe we'll do a video on different types of laminate, but this is decidedly not a wood. This is not laminate uh, in terms of like layered pieces of wood, like plywood. This is a, a, you know, a different type of material, and I think that one contributes to the price, but also contributes to the sound. Even feeling it, you know that you are not touching um, a layered wood. Obviously, they've got this veneer. This is like a rosewood veneer. And on the inside, when you're looking at it, it does, you can see wood grain, but there are things in this material that are, that are not wood, and I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. We have seen great carbon fiber guitars, we've, you know, people use things that aren't wood. Um, and I think, yes, if you're gonna be spending top dollar on an acoustic guitar, all of us would prefer solid wood back and sides. However, um, if you need something that's durable, something that you can take on the road, that you're not worrying about humidification, not worried about, you know, getting a crack in the wood or anything, this is probably as durable as it gets in a Martin guitar, um, which I think would be popular with a lot of people that want to take something on the road. Yes, this is not a road series guitar, but if you want to take it on the road, um, this thing can get dinged up. It's not going to not going to be something you need to worry about um, humidification wise, maintenance wise. It's pretty easy to take care of. Um, it does come with a gig bag, which I like. I mean, I think it's ridiculous that any guitars would come without a gig bag in the year 2023. But, uh, you know, that's a different story. It is a one and three quarter inch nut width and it feels like a Martin. You know, they're very selective in what they say the materials are if they're not using genuine mahogany and Sika spruce, you know, on a, say, a standard series. Many of the appointments on here say select hardwood when you look on the website. So they are not going to be using the toppest of top dollar materials because this is a guitar that's made entry level for the road, for practice, um, but it is made in North America. It says Martin on the headstock. I think there's something to respect about that. I mean, you're getting a quality instrument. The Mexican factory of Martin, I've been to the Pennsylvania factory, and they have a massive screen showing you what's going on right now in the Mexican factory. It is a fantastic facility that they make great guitars. I mean, I love all the 10 and 12 and 13 series stuff, and I do think the X series, um, most people are probably attracted to it because of the price, but I do think you're getting a quality product that you can trust. Straight out of the case, out of the box, this guitar was set up really, really well. Um, and I, you know, I think it's a great value. So I'm gonna let you hear it, and then we're gonna talk about the pricing, other comparable things in that price range, and why I think this one kind of stands out, why it might be more popular. Take a listen and stick around for that. Thank you. 
there you have it. You can tell probably by listening to it if you're a viewer or listener of this channel. Um, you can tell that that HPL on the back and sides is definitely doing something to the tone. I think no matter what, in a step up guitar, we've also talked about this, a solid top is really where it's at. It's one of the key things that I think takes it to the next level on a guitar. Um, and this does have scalloped X bracing, so you're hitting some of the the need to have things for a higher quality guitar. Um, but this being HBL back, HPL back and sides, um, it's not gonna give you the rich overtones of rosewood or the mid-range warmth of mahogany, the transparent punch of maple. This will be an HPL sounding guitar. It's very transparent, very punchy, um, and I don't think it sounds bad. I think playing it, it just sounds like an acoustic guitar that is a combined sound of exactly what you think of when you're thinking acoustic guitar. Um, it sounds good, it holds a tune, intonation's right, setup's good, it's comfortable to play, and you're not gonna get any coloration from the back and sides woods, no EQing. Obviously, everything does something, but I think this is doing the absolute least, so this is probably a good example of what does a spruce top sound like versus what does HPL sound like? Um, I should mention, even though I did play it through a microphone so you could hear the true tone, this guitar does have electronics. This is a Fishman MX in here, which right away adds to the value. Um, this guitar right now on March 27th, 2023, um, this goes for $749. And I think having a solid top, Martin made in North America uh, with electronics, I think that it's a good value. I think, you know, we still think about guitars as, I remember when I bought my first Les Paul and it was $12 back in 1901. Um, things are changing. Every single price is going up on all the guitars that anybody carries. So we got to keep that in mind when we're talking about value. But um, there are a few comparisons that I'd like to throw out there. One, this being $749. Um, and I kind of compared it to a similar guitar from Taylor, the 114 CE, similar body style. It's a Grand Auditorium. It's got cutaway, got electronics. It does have layered back and sides, so that some could see, I mean, many people could see as an upgrade. But that guitar right now goes for $999. So basically, whatever you're getting in the numbered series from Taylor is going up from $1,000 at this point. A 214 um, pushes it even further than that, and then when you're getting into the American-made stuff, you're really not getting anything for less than probably $1,800, $1,800 right now. Um, and so I think the 114 is a good comparison to this guitar, and it is uh, you know, significantly more when we're looking at guitars $1,000 or under. The other thing that I would bring up would be the Academy Series from Taylor, um, which currently you're only, only getting an Academy, say a 12 or a 10, um, and a body size that's smaller than this, or a body size that's a full dreadnought. So the Academy 12 is a grand concert, a little bit smaller, no cutaway, and you can get it with or without electronics. I believe the non-electronic version right now is going for right at 700, so you're paying about $50 more for a little bit more size. And uh, electronics, when you add electronics on there, it bumps up the price. And so there, there's a lot to kind of consider Taylor versus Martin. It's the age old battle that we talk about all the time. Um, you're really not finding something as close as possible to this. Yes, we're still talking layered wood on the Taylors versus the HPL here, but for something that you can not have to worry about maintenance wise um, and durability, good sound, well-made, I think those are two you know, North American made guitars that are made in Mexico and two fantastic factories from Taylor and Martin. And so I think this one holds a lot of value. If you are the type of person that wants to spend less than $1,000, but you want all solid wood, you're probably going to be looking at something which I would also recommend checking out, maybe from Guild, maybe from Guild's import line. They're made in China, but they're all solid wood and I think comparable in price to the ones that we're talking about. However, we're all talking comparisons here between Taylor and Guild and Martin. Um, the point of this video is me getting at why I think this is so popular and why I would turn around and then recommend it after seeing all of our viewers and customers digging this guitar, 
why would I turn around and say other people should check it out? So it breaks down to the body. I like the size, I like the feel, the curviness. Um, really helps to have a cutaway with electronics and this guitar, it's performance ready. Um, durability wise, easy to take care of. Don't have to worry about you know, a $3,000 all solid wood. If you want to get a $3,000 guitar, any day I would take you know anything from the standard series over this guitar. But if, if I have less than $1,000 to spend and I'm taking something on the road, I need to play shows with it, I need to not worry too much about it, or I just need a camping guitar, travel guitar, um, and I don't want something real tiny, a little, you know, little Martin GS Mini, anything like that. I do think this guitar has a lot to offer, and I would recommend it to anybody that kind of fits in that camp of needing something under a thousand dollars, under eight hundred dollars, and um, you know, needs it to be sounding good, easy to play, and easy to take care of. So that is the Martin GPC X Two E. Um, check out everything else in the X series, in the Road series, in the Standard series, because like I said, we recently restocked in a lot of Martins all throughout the line, and I've got something good to say about pretty much all of them. So check out what we've got on our website. Martin's website is also great for, you know, great resource for learning about their guitars. And um, if you are interested, please feel free to reach out to us. We got a few of these. We got pretty much everything that represents all these different places in the line, and I love to talk about them, as you can see. So go to our website, let us know, reach out to us, comment below, anything that you would like to see, we'd love to show it to you guys. We appreciate you watching. Have a good one.